Welcome traders. In this video we're going to go over how we can use order flow to hit that grand slam home run trade that we all want to achieve. One of the questions I get asked a lot is whether it's better to take a consistent two to three point profit on every trade or hold some trades that might get a much larger profit. So what I've done here is I've gone back to the December contract and I'm doing that because it's just after Christmas and I don't want any of the low volume to give me any kind of false ideas. So that's why this is the December contract here. Now what the idea is is pretty simple. I have a five range volumetric chart which is what I normally use. And the settings I have, I have gone and I've adjusted them for the order flow indicator. And basically I've taken everything off except for the point of control extension trade and the point of control absorption trade. I've also tightened up the numbers so that we are looking for stronger trades. So I still have a 4 to 1 ratio here. I have to enable the zones and I'm looking for a minimum delta between the two of at least 25 and minimum contracts I'm looking for 10. Now normally in when I have an exhaustion I put it at a 2 to 1 ratio I've actually raised that to a 3 to 1 ratio and I put the minimum deltas at 1 and 1. Now very important for this is I've enabled the point of control and I have also enabled the signals themselves. I've also put the delta strength indicator on here because that's going to be super important when we're going to judge how strong a movement is and when we may want to get out. It's also very important because as I'm going to show you very shortly we want to see when the bar volume is high or low. So I get asked this question a lot. Why are there different colors on the delta strength? Well it's a very easy question. When you see red and green what we're saying is that those are normal volumes and normal ranges between 40 and 140 percent of what is considered normal. The logic allows you to adjust for what is normal and what I'm looking at is the average of the last 14 bars. When we see something that is brown as we do right here and right here what it's saying is that's saying it's low volume and you actually have low volume that prints at the same time. The next color that we have is blue and when we see blue that is telling us that the volume is ranging between 140 and 175 percent. But what we really want to see is we want to see black. Here we have a black indication and black is telling us that the volume is 175 percent or more. Why do we want to see black and blue? Because these are areas that the chart is telling us that is extremely high volume and when we look at extremely high volume that is the definition of where the buyers are coming to meet the sellers or the sellers are coming to meet the buyers. So it's going to become very important later on. Now the idea is also that I really only want to take trades based on the POC extension. So I've gone and I've circled these POC extensions right here. And as you can see this is a pretty good uh, pattern that we have. I consider the POC extension the strongest pattern of all. And why do I consider that? When we have POC extensions being created as we do down here and we do down here what is interesting is that they are created and they continue to be created until a market reversal point as in right here. Here's where we have created a short extension zone. Down here we have just a red extension zone being created here and then we have another green and off we go. Now you're saying but over here and over here we created a red extension zone. Well that is true and part of the reason that we are identifying low volume 
is that we want to be aware that when we have a low volume that this isn't just an attempt to get better prices. So when we have a low volume situation as in right here, basically what's happening is the buyers are pulling their limit order support. When the buyers pull their limit order support, that makes it real easy to create a extension zone. Why are they doing that? Well, they're trying to get a better price right here for this move higher. Same exact thing is happening here. We have low volume. We create one little extension zone down here. Buyers get better prices. Price goes higher. So that's kind of the reason that these delta strengths are colored the way they are. And also why it's very important that we put the extension zones on a chart. Now, what's really important here is going to be the theory of how we're going to be staying in the trade. Okay, and how we're going to be staying in the trade is based on the point of control for that bar. So here's the theory that I want to explore. Down here, I have a point of control entry and I have a rising point of control until I have this down bar right here. Now the down bar is concerning, but it's not gonna take me out of the trade immediately. What I'm looking for is we do have a lower point of control, but it, it occurs on an up bar. If this bar had closed with a lower point of control, that's my key to get out of the trade. But it didn't close with the lower point of control. In fact, it gave us what we wanted. It gave the buyers a better chance to make a purchase here the point of control was low on the bar and we created another extension zone. So as we watch, we have increasing extension zones, increasing extension zones until we got up to this low volume. Then we had our little sell off, but the point of control was one tick lower, but it occurred on an up bar. So we're gonna allow that trade to then continue. So again, higher point of control, higher point of control. We have an equal point of control, higher, higher, equal, higher. And then what do we have? We have a point of control extension cell indication. So down here with exactly that same theory, we have a point of control extension by the point of control higher, the point of control higher, but on low volume. Again, the point of control here was low and this green box right here is an absorption box. That's again exactly what we want to see. And we again get another five or six point trade out of this. Taking this chart back just a few minutes earlier, we can see we had a point of control exhaustion and absorption occurring on this trade here and again the theory holds. We do have a higher point of control here but it's a down bar. We continue until we get to this point right here and here we have a second up bar with a point of control that would be higher. So in this case we would want to consider exiting the trade. That would be our stop out. But here's something else that we should consider. We should never really be trading in a vacuum. So when we were trading down here, we were trading at the blue counter trend zone and we did have regular divergence. So when you saw that and we saw that we had high volume developing on that bar, really good idea to get out of that trade. And then what did we do? We traded into this distribution divergence with high volume. Again, exactly what we want to see to take a short trade here. Now, if we had taken the short trade there, we're being confronted with this right here. We're being confronted by a POC extension, the development of several extension zones here. And this is where we got to look at our bigger picture. Our bigger picture is that on the patterns chart, we have everything going for us 
we have high volume at the top here. We have distribution divergence as being indicated by the divergence indicator. We have classification limit order divergence as indicated by our black marker here. And as we traded lower and we traded into here, our first normal target should be this blue zone right here. So one of the reasons that I have placed the delta strength on here is to get some kind of an idea. So this is basically what I am suggesting here. If you were short and you saw this POC extension develop, at this point, that is an extremely low probability trade because of everything going against you. If you got out of the trade from back here, that would be a great idea. Also, you could have just moved your stop and held it because of how weak the delta strength numbers were, just 123 and 83 on this two point move up. So your options when considering everything on the chart should be if in a short trade consider getting out and then we could have re-entered based upon this POC absorption right here and again ridden that down all the way to this point here. So this POC extension buy right here is going to be a trade that we're going to lose and we can kind of expect that because as we trade it higher and then lower, we can see that we developed the black delta strength indicating a big fight here between the buyers and the sellers and that fight ended up being negative. So in this case, we're, we are going to end up taking a point loss here on this trade, but obviously we were going to make it back in the trade that follows. One of the other things we don't want to do is we don't want to be a seller all the way down here. This is meant to catch a top or catch a bottom as we are trading up here. So if we didn't catch the top here and we've already traded off several points, we really don't want to be taking this POC extension trade from here. If we waited just a little bit longer we have this trade here that takes us from the low straight to the high where we have our trend trade with order flow. Here's an interesting situation because it involves a sell signal that we have here at the top combined with then a low volume POC extension buy here. And what makes this really unique and just a great trade is the fact that over on the price patterns chart, we develop special divergence here. So because we developed that special divergence here, what that tells us is that from the low here at 72.50 to the high here at 77 and a quarter, there were actually net sellers in large lot contracts. So if they were net sellers in large lot contracts, and then we develop a point of control extension at the high, that's a pretty good trade to want to be getting into. So when we come down here and we have this POC extension buy, what your consideration would be is that again, you're seeing it done on low volume. What happens, price rises, the sellers get another chance to make a trade. It again happens here where price is allowed to rise and we see again a high volume marker for delta strength and that takes us into a pretty nice little sell off there. And here's one final example. Here we have a POC extension buy here and when we trade up just four points, we had a POC absorption sell. Now that is going to be pretty much a red flag right there, except that as you can see, we had an extremely strong delta strength. And that's 
actually what the POC absorption is telling us that all of those buyers there did get their contracts absorbed. Now what happens is after that bar we then see an up bar with again the point of control going higher. So again if you use this POC absorption here as an exit for the trade that would be a truly logical exit to the trade. However, if you held it for the continuation of this bar and saw that you could see the buyers coming in with the delta strength and then taking it further higher, you might end up staying with it. Here again, here's where you had the same exact thing happening. You had the absorption sell, but here we had a second bar with a lower POC. So when this is developing as a lower POC on a second down bar, this is definitely where we want to be out of this trade at that point. Then as we come back to here, you can again see we're given another entry signal on our POC absorption and we ride that one straight up to the top. Again here, I'm not phased by the lower point of control because it occurs on an up bar. And again, we should be looking at nothing in a vacuum because this POC extension absorption trade, which did occur on high volume, also occurred during a very strong trend on the price patterns chart. And as I've said many times before, if we're gonna take a trade here, this offers very poor risk reward in most cases because what's going to happen is in a strong trend, especially a very strong trend where it's gone past the strong trend resistance zone here, is we're only going to get about a two point pullback and then we're going to get this reversal and the continuation into the exhaustion pattern. So nothing should ever be taken in a vacuum and while this may prove out to be just a small number of losses compared to the number of winners that occur when this happens. It's something that needs more research and needs to be proved before you go ahead and start taking these strong trend trades that are counter to the existing trend. Hope you've enjoyed this video and wish everybody luck in the new year. Thanks. Have a good day. Bye.